Okay, for our last example, we're trying to find all complex fourth roots of the complex number negative 2 minus 2 root 3i. So from the beginning, I should say we expect four answers. That's because we're looking for fourth roots. So at the end of this, we should have four answers. And I'm going to convert the number into polar form. So let me remind you of the formulas for polar form, x squared plus y squared. And theta is arctangent of y over x. And if x is less than 0, you have to introduce the fudge factor plus pi there. And so I'll go ahead and find that right away. r is equal to the square root of negative 2 squared is 4. Um, now, 2 root 3 squared is 2 squared times 3. So that's 4 times 3 plus 12. So that's the square root of 16 is 4. Theta is arctangent of y over x. So that's 2 root 3 over 2 root 3. Uh, positive because we have two negatives. Uh, but the x is negative, so I do have to introduce the fudge factor of pi. And now arctangent of root 3, that's a common value for arctangent. That's pi over 3 plus pi is 4 pi over 3. So I've got my r and my theta. So z is equal to r e to the i theta, 4 e to the 4 pi over 3 4 pi over 3 times i. So that's the polar form for that complex number. Got the r and the theta. I've got the polar form for the complex number. And now I want to find all complex fourth roots of that. So let me remind you what De Marv's theorem says about this. It says that z to the 1 over n is equal to r to the 1 over n times cosine of theta plus 2k pi over n plus i sine of theta plus 2k pi over n. And you figure that out for each value of k from 0 to n minus 1. And in this case, n is 4. So k goes from 0 to 3. OK, so I'd like to make a chart here of my all the possibilities here. So let's work out what k could be. We already said that that could be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, I want to figure out what this angle theta plus 2k pi over n is. So theta plus 2k pi over n. Now, theta is 4 pi over 3, and n is 4. So this is 4 pi over 3 plus 2k pi over 4, which simplifies down to uh, 4 pi over 3 over 4 is just pi over 3 plus 2k pi over 4 is just k pi over 2. So let's figure what, the out, what that value is, figure out what that value is for each value of k. So when k is 0, that's just pi over 3. When k is 1, that's pi over 3 plus pi over 2. Common denominator is 6. So that's 2 pi over 3, or sorry, uh, 2 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. 
when k is 2, this is pi over 3 plus uh, 2 pi over 2 is pi, which is 4 pi over 3. And when k is 3, we have pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 2. Again, common denominator is 6. We have 2 pi over 6 plus 9 pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6. So those are the four angles we'll be looking at. We'll be plugging in to the sine and cosine formula. If you think about that as being alpha, next step is to figure out what sine and cosine of alpha is. So sine of alpha plus, or sorry, cosine of alpha plus I sine of alpha, because the cosine comes first. Cosine of alpha plus I sine of alpha. Uh, when alpha is pi over 3, let me draw a, a little unit circle to help me figure these values out. So when I is pi over 3, or when, when alpha is pi over 3, that's up there. The sine and cosine are, or sorry, the cosine and sine are 1 half and root 3 over 2. They're both positive because we're in the first quadrant. Now for 5 pi over 6, that's in the second quadrant. That's over there, 5 pi over 6. So the sine and cosine are root 3 over 2 and 1 half, and now the cosine is negative. Sine's still positive because the x is negative, the y is positive there. 4 pi over 3 is down here in the third quadrant. 4 pi over 3. Sine and cosine are both negative now, and it's negative 1 half minus root 3 over 2. And 11 pi over 6 is way over there. And the sine and cosine are root 3 over 2. And the sine is negative, so minus i times 1 half there. So. Those are the sines and cosines of those four angles. By the way, if you look at that unit circle that I drew, let me highlight where those points are. You notice that they're exactly evenly spaced around the unit circle. It's because uh, we were adding on k pi over 2 each time. We were adding on pi over 2 each time. So we get these four angles that are exactly spaced out around the unit circle by intervals of pi over 2. And that's not an accident. It's because we started out looking for fourth roots. So you divide the unit circle into four parts. And that's why you go around pi over 2 each time. So that's no accident that those are evenly spaced out by multiples of pi over 2. And had we gone one more step, we would have ended up at pi over 3, where we started again. So let me go back to finding these fourth roots. Uh, we found cosine alpha plus I sine alpha. The only um, thing we have to do left is multiply on the R to the 1 over N. Let me figure that out. R to the 1 over N is 4 to the 1 fourth. Now, there's a clever thing we can do with exponents here. I know that 4 is 2 squared to the 1 fourth. So that's 2 to the 2 fourths. That's 2 to the 1 half, which is root 2. And so what we're doing here is we're finding r to the 1 over n times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. But the r to the 1 over n is root 2. So I'm just going to go through and multiply root 2 by each of the complex numbers in the preceding column of the chart. So root 2 times the first complex number is root 2 over 2 plus i times root 6 over 2. That's because root 2 times root 3 is root 6. 
Next one is negative root 6 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 i. Negative root 2 over 2 minus root 6 over 2 i. And finally, root 6 positive root 6 over 2, that's root 2 times root 3, minus root 2 over 2 i. So I'm just going to box off this last column of the chart and call that my answers. And what that means is that these are four complex numbers. If you take any one of these four complex numbers, those are my four answers, if you raise any one to the fourth power, what you should get is the original complex number that we started with, negative 2 minus 2 root 3 i. So that's the end of that last problem. Let's go back and recap and see what strategies we used to solve it. Uh, we started out with this number minus 2 minus 2 root 3 i. I wanted to get that in polar form so I could use Dumas theorem. Dumas theorem only works on complex numbers in polar form. So I use my equations for polar form. r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. And theta equals arctan of y over x plus the fudge factor of x is less than 0. Now my x and y, I got those from the original complex number. And the theta, I did have to use the, arc, the uh, fudge factor of plus pi. Arctan of root 3 is an angle that I know, pi over 3. And so I get theta is 4 pi over 3. So I got the polar form of the complex number, r e to the i theta. r is 4, e to the i theta is e to the 4 pi over 3 times i. Now I use De Moivre's theorem. De Moivre's theorem says you look at z to the 1 over n is r to the 1 over n times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, where the alpha is this theta plus 2k pi over n. And then you plug in different values of k going from 0 to n minus 1. Well, the n here was 4. So I run k from 0 to 3. That's n minus 1. And so here I made a list of my different k's. For each one of those, I figured out theta plus 2k pi over n. That was the second column. Theta plus 2k pi over n. And that's what I was calling alpha. So I plugged in theta was 4 pi over 3, n is 4. And then I plugged in different values of k each time to get these four answers for alpha. For each one of those, remember De Moivre's theorem says you look at cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. So I looked at cosine alpha plus i sine alpha in this next column of the chart. And to get those cosines and sines, I drew my little unit circle here. And I read off the cosine and sine of each one. Those are common values, so I do remember those. And finally, I have to multiply this by r to the 1 over n. What I worked out over here was r to the 1 over n. r was 4, and n was also 4, so it's 4 to the 1 4. Write 4 as 2 squared, and that gives you a quick way to figure out what um, to simplify down 4 to the 1 4. Simplify that into square root of 2. So I multiply r to the 1 over n, square root of 2, that's here. Multiply that by each of the values that we got in the preceding column. We multiplied these by square root of 2. And that finally gave me my four answers for the fourth roots of negative 2 minus 2 root 3i. So these are my four answers right here as my four fourth roots. So that's the end of our lecture on De Moivre's theorem to find nth powers and nth roots of complex numbers. In fact, that's the end of all our lectures on trigonometry. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Will Murray for Educator.com.